Um, I hit record. Me too. Very good. All right. Ask all right. away. So, ask away. So I'll, all right. So I will. You're. Go, we're doing this audio, so I'm going to just uh, do the. There we go. Okay. Well, let's let's find out how how you're doing. Um, you're you're in your. Uh, uh, are you in, in Manhattan in your in apartment, or did you get out of the city with your family? No, I'm in my apartment in the village on Bleecker Street, between right. Mercer and LaGuardia. <clears throat> Uh-huh. Been hunkered down for about what six weeks now. Uh huh. Yeah. Five Is that and the? Half weeks, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. It's. Uh, uh, is Is there anybody in the family who has not left the apartment, or do people you know, we, kind of? We, we, you know, it's my wife, and my two daughters. We get out shopping. Uh, I went and did some shopping today, and then I come back in. They go out and do some shopping. My, my, my oldest daughter's working, so she goes mm-hmm. to work every once in a while. You know, mm-hmm. so we get out. Mm. I have a uh, you know, like my son, who's uh, very good. It turns out in in hunkering down, <laughs> he's just sort of a. I guess he's like an inside type of kid. You know, he's uh yeah seems to handle it better than I do. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's you know. what it is, man. That's what we. That's what we're in. This is sort of the new normal. Hmm. So one thing we can talk about, of course, is the uh, the HBO series. Sure. Because you know people can actually use some of their time, not you know, uh, and watch it while while they are sheltering rather in. So, um, and it's uh, you you. Uh, yeah, I could I could directed. I the Atlanta is co- missing and murdered. Missing and murdered. I co-directed the first two episodes with Mara Jamal from her company Show Force. We started about 18, 19 months ago, production, pre-production and production, and we finished uh, about a month ago. And, you know, it's the fourth episode pre- premiered on HBO last night, and there's one more to go. There's five episodes. And uh, it was really, really very good experience. I mean, it was also a really rich and complicated story to dig into looking at these murders and who may or may not have done it. Was it Wayne Williams? Was it someone else? And we cover lots of bases on this on this in this series, which I think no other series, no other show has ever done on, on the Atlanta's missing and murdered children. No, maybe the closest was your own documentary on Maynard Jackson, the first African American mayor of Atlanta. Yeah, but I only did about in the in the Maynard doc, I only did about five minutes. Was that this, all it was? That's all about it's, that segment alone is only about five minutes in the whole film. So this was, uh, you know, they had seen one of their. One of the people at the company, Josh Bennett, had seen that film at the uh, Full Frame Documentary Festival, and he's really taken with that segment. And he's he's the one who said maybe this should be explored in a much more comprehensive way. I see. So he went back to his company, Show Force. It's owned by Marl Chamayoff and Jeff Dupree, and pitched it. And they all went for it, and they put together a huge proposal, a really very substantial proposal that we then pitched to HBO in the summer of 2018 because we had all done previous work with HBO and they gave us a green light. Mm. And we started shooting. We started going down to Atlanta in January of 2019 and we spent the next seven months, eight months down there shooting at the same time as we were editing. And, you know, it was, uh, it was, you know, what's amazing is that we were able to do all these, these five hours within that short span of 18, 19 months, which is pretty much unheard of. To put a series of this this magnitude in such short in such a short length of time. Yeah, there's so many um, people that you guys uh, interviewed and are involved. Yeah. You know, it just seems like an enormous undertaking. Maybe it's just are are our, our, uh, the majority of the people still in Atlanta? Is that does that maybe one reason why it wasn't as quite as challenging? Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly right. It was every pretty much except for maybe one or two exceptions. Everybody we interviewed was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody. Right. Exactly. That really helped to just sort of keep us on schedule and getting things, you know, executed. Yeah. Why did Why did you just uh, opt to direct the first two? It's a four part series. Well, because the company there was four directors, and we want to we want to share. You know, we want to share yeah. the share the resources. So uh-huh. initially, Mara and I could have done. She could have done one. I could have done one. She could have done two. I could have done two. But we decided since we've known each other so long, and we basically had the same sort of creative mindset that we could work together, which we did. It was it was really good working with her. Mm-hmm. And then Josh did three. Then Josh and Jeff did co-directed four, and then Jeff did five. So it, it worked out. And you know, 
we all looked at each other's shows and critiqued each other's uh, segments. So it was a very effective working relationship. Mm -hmm. Were there any hurdles? I mean, was is there? I mean, it seems like contemporary Atlanta is still very much uh, behind the putting out the story, you know, and of, of sort of owning it and um, not trying to, you know, hide it or minimize it at least because it's it, it's a part of a what some might say is a tainted part of atlanta's history right I yeah mean, they don't they don't they don't they're not running away from it i think the the challenge is is that you know many people particularly in the in the black community don't feel that wayne was the killer or he didn't kill all the children uh -huh. so that's all that's always been at the forefront of many of those people's minds and uh you know, we would talk to many people while we were out in the streets, maybe walking to a lo driving to a location or going to a restaurant. And everybody, even if they didn't live there, they knew about the Atlanta child murders, that period, that infamous period in Atlanta's history. Everybody had an opinion. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like it's a, it is a tainted part of the history, but it's something that the people have not. I wouldn't say they've run away from, you know, but they, they still deal. They're still dealing with it, as mm -hmm. you can see with the mayor and her administration. Right. And we, uh, what was was it the fortieth anniversary? Uh, what was it that motivated the uh, recent? I don't think so much it was the anniversary. I think it was the fact that uh, some of the parents, like Catherine Leach, one of the mothers of the victims, was really holding the, the administration's feet to the fire, wanted some answers, wanted them to reopen the case and look at the cases again. And I think she, that she had support from other mothers other relatives of the victims who really wanted the mayor to do something. If not finding out who the real killer is, but to then at least memorialize what happened to these 40 young people. So people will always remember. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's um, interesting timing since it was not long before, it was happening when you were just around the time you and the, I guess the team were uh, down there. Yeah, it was that was that was the really fascinating thing that we're down there like a month into shooting, and all of a sudden we hear that the mayor is having a press conference, and we get a crew together and we run over there and we we document that, and that became sort of, you know, we didn't know at the time that sort of mm -hmm. became the beginning of the movie, as you can see, it, be, it became the way they introduced the film. Yeah, um, I, before I I mentioned it was a four part series. I apologize, it's a five part series. Five part series, yes. Yeah, what is the community? Uh, response been to the series or so did you far, or you did you screen it for anybody prior to uh the hbo premiere or well initially we were going to go down and show the the the, the families of the victims we we're going to have a special screening for them but the COVID thing you know had got all screenings canceled you know yeah. we were supposed to do a big premiere screening over at uh hudson yards at hbo got canceled so everything got canceled because we had planned to do screenings Mm -hmm. But, you know, all of a sudden when the, this pandemic hit, everything stopped. But the reaction that we've 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 heard from family members has been very positive so far. You know, very positive. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's uh, currently available, uh, right? All five parts? Uh, all four parts are it? available on HBO Go and HBO Now. The, I know, see. What they, they don't, they don't, they won't make the other part available until it shows, until it screens next Sunday. Okay, so I I got you. So actually, by the time this goes up, it might be the case where all five. Well, yeah. I have to figure that out. Yeah. Have to figure that out. Okay. Yeah. No wonder I. That's that's why I thought it was. I thought it was four parts, uh, because I'd only saw the four that were uh, currently available on my my own subscription. So. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 amazing. The and just um, uh, so many of the uh, people of that community are still around, still incredibly um, committed to getting this story told. And, and you just see, like, in their faces uh, that they've had to live with this, you know, and, and, and in many cases, right, there have not been any resolution. And I just can't imagine going through so many years with that. Oh, it's painful. You're a parent. Obviously, it's, you know how painful it is for these parents to yeah. really know who might have killed their loved one. It's very painful. I, yeah. Emotional. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you were down there for how long in Atlanta? Well, the whole crew, we were down there off and on from January 2019 through like September of 2019. Wow. That's amazing how quickly this came together then. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's fast. I've never had a doc 
happen that fast. <laughs> it's not, H- not, not as serious. Right. It's just everything was on steroids. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Incredible. So that is, again, that's called the uh, Atlanta's Missing and Murdered, the Lost Children. Uh, that's right. And uh, it's a five-part series. It's currently, at least four parts anyway, are, as I, we speak, are, are available for viewing. I think each one is about a 45-minute running time. Well, each one's about 52 minutes. Don't correct me on my own podcast, please. That's uh... <laughs> You don't want to say 45 minutes, because you're going to be, you go back and say it yourself, 45 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, 52 minutes. It's it's almost like it's structured for commercial television in the length of it. But it, anyway, it's... Yeah, it's, well, it's getting it's more about... like that. Yeah, but you've been quite busy. Regardless, are you still managing to work on projects while sheltered in there, or are you uh, taking a uh, time off? No, I, you know, I've been working on uh, another film that I'm finishing up for HBO about black visual artists, and sculptors, and painters that I started around the same, a little few months after at least we were into Atlanta child murders, and mm-hmm. I'm wrapping that up now as we speak. You know. Yeah, that I don't know when that's going to come out for HBO, but we're close to trying to wrap that up. Mm-hmm. And then I'm doing another doc that I'm in the middle of editing called Martin Luther King and the FBI about uh, the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover and how they surveilled King. Yes, up into, right. you know, for many years. And this is a really complex storytelling, looking at both MLK and J. Edgar Hoover and who these men were, mm-hmm. and J. Edgar Hoover's obsession with you know dethroning King as he thought King was too big for his britches. Oh, sure, sure. The idea would be to sabotage right, everything by pointing out that he was, might have been a flawed person by, by uh, eavesdropping on his and surveying his private conversations or private moments. Is that, was, is that, um, how, is that a touchy kind of uh, topic? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's controversial just in of itself, but is there a sense of very, very, you know, stealth kind of protection over... King's reputation. I mean, everybody knows about these recordings and that they've been out and they supposedly show King in less than optimal light, correct? So yeah, um, sure. uh, is, is there a sense of, like I say, of, of protectiveness uh, out there? People, you know, are, wouldn't want him, King portrayed in anything other than, a, you know, much more positive and... Uh, well, I think that I think that's I think to preserve the, to preserve his you know his uh, legacy. I think that's one of the questions we raise in this doc. Okay, you know, will will I mean at the end of we after after we get to the telling of the story, what is the value of releasing these tapes and mm-hmm. you know who will it will it will it hurt King's legacy and his reputation or, or, or won't it hurt him? Mm-hmm. You know, it's an interesting dilemma because on one level, you know, you want somebody to. You want people to, it's history, right? Part of history, being responsible to history is telling the truth. As, and, and, and sometimes the, the truth does uh, change over time because you find out more information or you find out that there's been misinformation out there that's been corrected. So, you know, things do evolve. On the other hand, I suppose you also want to preserve somebody's legacy, somebody who means so much to some, you know. Well, I think that's the question that has to be raised. I mean, we, yeah. we, we're definitely exploring the fact that he was not, a, you know, he was not a, a faithful husband, mm-hmm. that he had affairs with other women, that he, you know, that he was shepherded by a gentleman who had been a member of the Communist Party. All of these things were, you know, as far as David Hoover was concerned, these were horrific things. I mean, how could he be associated with somebody with the Communist Party? You know, how could he be a man of cloth and to be fornicating with other women other than his wife? <coughs> and Hoover hopes that by having this stuff explored... Hello? Yeah, it's just the siren. Oh, thank the you. Siren go mm-hmm. by. Yeah, if only... Uh... Yeah, I'm just letting it go by. I appreciate it. It, it, it. Somehow they make their way onto almost every episode one way or another anyway, so... Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think I think Hoover was hoping that you know by by leaking to the press that they would come out and say, "Look at King; he's you know he's not such hypocrite. a yeah. you know he's a hypocrite." But mm-hmm. the press was a very different press than it is today. Right? You know, they weren't they weren't revealing sort of the 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 the, the, the shadowy side of some of our supposed heroes. I mean, be it JFK, be it Martin Luther King, you know, they weren't doing that. 
today they probably would have done it, but who knows? They didn't do it back then. Right. And, but today we're also much more nonplussed, but, uh... yeah. So the question, I mean, I think it's one of the questions this stock will raise, mm-hmm. you know, what will this do to King's legacy if it does anything at all? I, I got to believe that given that we're operating in today's climate, that, that it, it probably won't have that great of an impact, but, and that's just, you never know. My, yeah. yeah. My little opinion for what it's worth. Yeah. And so, so, and that, yeah, go ahead. So we're hoping to get that done by the summer. And who knows where we, you know, initially we saw it as a theatrical, but who knows now with the climate. I don't think there's going to be many theatricals for documentaries in, in 2020. So mm. who knows? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I guess you, you could look at it. I guess you got to be open to whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, nobody really has an answer to that question right no, now. No, not at all. Is that a level? Is that a uh, uh, point of anxiety for you as a documentary filmmaker? No, (laughs) because (laughs) because because, you know, to be honestly, honest, honestly, Mm -hmm. most of my films don't do theatricals anyway. They Mm -hmm. usually go on either you know PBS or HBO or Netflix or Amazon. So you know, I'm not I'm not like you know saying oh it's got to be a theatrical. I just think we figure it out, you know, and we'll figure out how to get it out there for people to see. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're in a select uh, group of, of documentary filmmakers, you know, that uh, has the for- uh, good fortune of being able to uh, broadcast. Um, I'm not saying it's just a, uh automatic thing. I'm sure you have to take into account as you're developing the concept for the film, you know, that that is a, I imagine that that is a strong possibility at least right that yeah. you'll be able to broadcast it just going into it and raising the money yeah yeah this one we saw as a theatrical i mean the martin luther king one we both ben hadeen who i did two trains with we saw it as a theatrical but who knows what will happen now with the climate that we're living in yeah sure 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 but uh, so because king was uh so broadly known that the audience would be out there for a theatrical exactly exactly <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing all this stuff no, based on right. yeah. Because King is still iconic. I mean, of course, know, he's, he's not a name that people, young people, don't know. Everybody knows his name. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it doesn't. Um, yeah, never fails that uh, on the birthday every year that you know that these words and these moments crystallize in some new way. You know, or have just as great an impact as ever. Because it's always, unfortunately, some horrible thing going on in the world that, you know, where he's still so relevant and his message yeah, is still so, so incredibly relevant, you know. Exactly. So, exactly, Adam. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Not to say that Sammy Davis Jr.'s message isn't. Oh, that film, I mean, you know, <laughs> frankly, I was talking to Michael Cantor, the executive producer of American Masters, and that Sammy Davis Jr. film has really had some very strong legs. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been using it to fundraise. It's going to be it's going to be re, re, re televised on American Masters in May. You know, it's a very popular film, one of the most popular docs I ever did. Well, it's- you know, when I saw it, I was really, I think, impressed. Uh, uh, first of all, just in terms of you know, the um, just the production itself, but. Um, also, just so much I didn't know about him, you know, um, I know. and and how much I learned about him. Uh, it, there was really, you know, there there was enough there easily for a five part series too. Uh, I mean, the different chapters of his life uh, were in of themselves. If you know, each one is like its own story and or movie, so uh, or documentary. You know, um, I thought the uh, I was just telling somebody the other day, in fact, about that uh, section where, you know, he was starting to kind of break out on his own as a very, very young entertainer and he could do these incredible impressions and he he would he went on the stage, he would start doing like, uh, you know, was Jimmy Stewart or uh, Jimmy Cagney, I can't remember who. And then his, and he was part of that act with his father and his uncle and he got off the stage and they uh told him in, the, in no uncertain terms not to be doing impressions of white uh, celebrities, you know, that that was too dangerous in terms of some of their venues. That's right. Back then, it wasn't, it wasn't a wonderful thing to be entertaining a white man. But you see, the, that was a different world. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very different world. Yeah. Um, so, uh, are you able to? Uh, are you able to uh, find time to watch other stuff that's out there? Uh, since think, you're, you're, I've been watching everything, man. Yeah. From yeah. T- Tiger, <laughs> Tiger, oh, no. King, Tiger King to uh-huh. Cheer. To what? To cheer. It was a. Did you see Cheer on Netflix? A documentary about these these cheerleaders in Texas. Oh no, I haven't seen that. Oh, it's really that's a good series, man. Oh, good. Which, I'm looking well, for. Well done. Well done. So mm-hmm. I watched that. You know, I, I even started watching Ozark, which I hadn't seen. I watched the first season, and then there is uh, that's my, gotten a lot of uh, uh, yeah, you know social yeah. media buzz again because I guess you know people are so desperate for something yeah. escapist stuff like that that it's uh, you know they're making the time for something like that. Which yeah, I watched the last so the last episode of Homeland last night. Mm-hmm. My ex wife is on that was on the bunch of those episodes. What is your, what's your name? Karen Pittman. Who she who she play? That's a good question. Now I gotta Karen hold on. Pitt- she was in the all the one that were filmed like in um, uh, Morocco or something. Let me see. I've just because she she had to travel to Africa uh, to, like last year to shoot a bunch. Uh, she was in one arc. Um, just Google her and you'll see who I'm talking about. But uh, uh, I see her, but I'm trying. Who's who is she? Karen. Let me see. This is, she's this, now on a series, and she's in LA because she's on a series on this Apple series um, with um, uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon. And uh, what is she, how does she spell her first name? Yeah, traditional K A K A R E N. You sure she's in Homeland? I'm looking. At, is this is your wife your ex wife black? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see any Homeland thing in her name. I thought that was the show she was on. Hold on. I hate. I yeah. see Yellowstone. The morning no, she's show. in Homeland. Yeah. Where? Where? I don't see it. Vanessa Kroll is her name of her character. What? Wait yeah. a second. Am I looking at the right Karen Pittman? Was she born in Mississippi? Yes. I'm looking on IMDb Pro, so I may be. No, I'm kidding. This is uh, hold on. Regular I'm, IMDb. I'm going, I'm going to IMDb right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Karen Homeland. Pittman. She was on. Uh, let's see. I'm looking here. At least three episodes. Vanessa Season. Cole. Who was she in the episode? Who was she? You know, I, I've not watched it. I think I have oh, to take it. Oh, she to... was. She was the FBI agent. Yeah. She's playing the FBI agent who interviews Carrie Madison. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognize her now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I know who she is. Oh, this is your ex, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Nice man. Nice. Well, I, I may be I may be leaving New York, so after all this, I don't know if I have it in me to do another uh, quarantine in New York. If we're going to go through this again, yeah, I have to well, be honest with you. Especially where is, she, where is she now? She's there. She's in L.A. right now. She was uh, they postponed. I mean, they put out that series that she's on. Um, Yellowstone. No, no. It's uh, it's called. Um, the morning show it's called she's uh she's she's in the you know she's got a pretty big role on that show it's with jennifer aniston and uh um, yeah i know steve uh, carell isn't it yeah yeah exactly billy crudup yeah. and uh yeah so they were on uh shooting the second season and then um obviously they were put on hiatus and i think the plan is to go back to it next month and uh finish the second season and then well i guess you know they, she feels pretty confident that the show is going to go on Okay. Given the cast, given the cast alone, I guess, you know, they're probably, mm-hmm. you know, they probably, um, that's probably a likely thing. And uh, so she's out there and, um, you know, she would, she wants the kids, uh, you know, Jacob has a half sister uh, whose dad is also an, who's an actor. So um, it may make sense. I don't know. Anyway, it's all, it's all up in the air. So, and I'm, my only thing is my mom is still here. She's, uh, you know, in, um, so is Jacob from her from you, was you, were you her first husband? Yeah, first yeah. and only. Yeah, yeah. She oh, uh, had a child subsequently, but uh, yeah, and they all lived together. I mean, Karen with the two kids typically, but once the series started, she's spending half the year like in L.A. now. So it just changes kind of everything. So uh, the idea was that uh, at some point, very soon, as soon as it, we feel it's safe enough, well, Jacob can um, 
you know, she, she would love to have them because she hasn't seen them in so long and had to go through this entire, you know, uh, pandemic oh. without, without her kids, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah. oh. where's the other kid in New York too? Or in- yeah. Yeah. She's in Brooklyn as well. Um, and her, her dad and, um, oh. you know, yeah. 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 You know, that's the complex, it's the complex world. Really. Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Especially as you become like, find, oh, I'm friends with this other ex, you know, because our kids are siblings. So you sort of, you never yeah. know where life is going to take you, but it's, it's all that's good. Right. It's all good. And, yeah. and he's an actor too? He, yes. So uh, I think that the, they may be actually open to uh, uh, maybe relocating as well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm speaking ahead of myself. But yeah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, but anyway, that's the situation. I don't know. I don't know. I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of things to think about. I guess, but uh, you do, man. How did? How do? Oh, so you were talking about? That, oh, that's right. We got off this because of the homeland. I was trying to trying to yeah. navigate my way back to our original uh, our original yeah, conversation. I, I watched the last episode. I watched all the season of Homeland. I watched the last oh my episode God. last night. So you you yeah. obviously have been watching it a, a, all along. Yeah, there was one season I missed, but then I came back two seasons ago, so I watched the season before last and this season. I thought the I thought the ending was kind of weak, but you mm-hmm. know, it was too neat. But it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But you yeah. know, I've been watching that. I've been watching Westworld because I only started watching Westworld because it comes on right after Land is Missing and Murdered. So that's what's got me to watch. Oh, that. right, right, right. You're the yeah. lead in. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure always to be on the show. Thank you. Take care, Sam.